Wrapping up practice number 11 and headed into 12 on Saturday where we'll um, continue to just do a lot of situational football and also work live tackling in a scrimmage setting. Um, and again, a lot, of, uh, a lot of what you see in spring ball, a lot of guys starting to understand a little bit better what the standard is, holding each other more accountable, very competitive in most areas. A couple guys dinged up, but nothing serious, so we feel good about our health through spring and entering these last couple of days. And just looking forward to watch these guys compete more and more. And that's what it's all about. There is no holding back. There is no, uh, no one's being coddled, you know. We gotta go, we gotta practice, we gotta get better. We gotta stay off the ground, you know. Sometimes we get a little over aggressive and that's on us as coaches. We gotta coach that better. Um, open to questions, please. So speaking, you mentioned guys being dinged up. Um, I don't know if he was out there today, but we haven't seen Ruben Bain out there for a little bit. Um, is he expected to come back, you know, at all during the spring? Or? Yeah, he practiced today. Okay. He was full, he was full go. So. Uh, usually looks good, you know. We try to get after him a little bit, you know, and challenge him, which is important. But you know, he uh, obviously is a high-level player, and uh, he looks he looked like himself. Can you go into the development of the quarterback room beyond Cam Ward? Seems like a lot of guys with experience competing there. Have you seen that group push each other? Well, I think uh, both Emery and Reese have really done a good job of staying on those heels of Cam. Cam is obviously taking the ones reps, and he deserves it. He's earned that. And then both Emery and Reese have, um, are kind of right after that. And then you see a lot of really good things from Jakari and, uh, and Judd Anderson and the limited reps he gets. You see a guy that's going to also be a really good player uh, down the line. So it's a crowded room, but a good room and a talented one. And we haven't had that yet. So uh, the most important thing is that they approach every day with a good attitude and then they're ready to compete and uh, see how it all shakes out at the end of spring ball. How hard is keeping that room together with the talent that's there? How important is that to you? I say it's less difficult to have it at empty, you know? I'd rather have it this way. And then honestly, um, I think it's the best way for college football going forward anyways. I think you pack up each room with the highest level talent you can. So therefore, you know, feelings, uh, moodiness, um, playing time, wants and needs are all settled on the field. And it's very much a business-like approach when it comes to playing time. Uh, you certainly stay the course of tremendous mentorship and guidance, coaching, teaching, instructing, but you've got to put yourself in a position to help the team win. And to do so, you've got to make sure that every single room has enough talent and competition to come out with championship caliber play at each position. Coach, day in and day out, kind of going on camera, what makes you, you know, think, hey, this kid's special, hey, this is what I wanted from here so bad? He's tough and smart, and he's really hungry. Those things for a quarterback uh, are critical, but not to mention uh, the fact that he just really knows football. He understands football and sees the field extremely well. So things that, uh, you know, you talk about guys that see things in sequence, sequ sequential quarterbacks versus spatial, the ones that could see it as a drop back, as they're on the run, uh, as they're improvising, right? Guys like that, um, they have a special knack for you know, improvising and extending plays. But, <clears throat> The fact that he's done so well in the drop back game as well and understanding pressures and how it's being blocked and, and where to go to with the football and then the ball placement, the accuracy. And then the, the drive just to go in there after practice and spend more time every single day at getting better. I just a very driven human being that's very talented and that's, a, that's always really hard to stop. Mario, last time you spoke to us, you spoke highly about Trevante Citizen. Mm -hmm. He said, taking the next step, or what maybe click was your term? Well, just how he's what I spoke about him was it clicked, he was getting better, he's in a battle, you know. Um, I think that running back room continues to get better, and we're going to push them, continue to push them really, really hard because they need to, especially with a couple guys down and out. So, uh, but Trevante has improved steadily, and we're going to look for more improvement out of him. Mario, we're going to talk to Ray Ray and JoJo in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen the second year receivers like Ray Ray and Robbie Washington take a step this spring? And then what have you seen from Nikar and, and JoJo? Yeah, Ray Ray really stands out as a second year guy. Ray Ray has added 15, 18 pounds of muscle. Um, and just everything, you know, as a, when we say second year guy, really the end of his first full year, you see the natural progression of a guy that's worked really hard and has talent and that wants to win and wants to be a great player. Awesome human being, awesome competitor. Works at it, works hard in practice, competes, always a great attitude, love him, has a super future. Robbie has been nicked up, so he's been on and off. When he's been in there, he has shown that he can help this team win. He could be a really good football player, 
Uh, Nikar, he is, man, he's taken so many reps. His GPS numbers are through the roof, and he's a naturally explosive guy. And he's made a lot of plays, contested catches, um, sometimes just run by guys, and sometimes just found just some soft, some soft spots in, uh, in zone coverage and has evolved, you know? I think in high school you saw a guy that was just faster than everybody else, and he has taken that next step as a player to learn and understand how to beat certain coverages uh, and couldn't be... Couldn't be more excited about those three guys right there. They're awesome. How, how, do, how do you, when you're when you're watching those guys, and or, yeah, are you uh, talking about JoJo, and then also how do you, when you're watching like them going one on ones, how do you determine this is a receiver doing something really well versus this is you know the corner maybe lacking or vice versa? You know, well JoJo, let's talk first about him. JoJo has been thrown in there, and so has Nine, so has Ray Ray, Al Robbie as well. They've all gotten reps with the ones at some point in time. And we're trying to do that with most of the guys that we feel um, have a chance to help us, um, have a chance to help themselves become a starter or push for starting uh, reps, as well as help us win football games. JoJo, we've talked before how he's played at a high level and it shows, uh, and we throw him in there and he's gonna make his freshman mistakes, but the natural talent is, is very easy to see. Um, he's gained some weight, he's gotten bigger, he's gotten stronger. I think you can expect a really, really good freshman player that's going to contribute a lot and is is getting everybody to run for their money. He really is. All those guys are. And um, we got to keep ramping it up in that room. We have a really good quarterback room. So your wide receivers should be really excited. And they also have to come with the mentality that, you know, we run the ball too. You got to get in there and block. And those guys, despite the fact that they're not huge guys, they show a willingness to throw their body around and get in there and be team players and block as well. So. We're, we're really fired up about those guys. A more right, questions for Mike Coach. Redding, I think, he's got the iron He sure did. Uh, you know, he must be a pretty special guy. He is. He is a high academic guy, um, very accountable, responsible team guy. Um, just doesn't do anything wrong. It's been unfortunate for him, the amount of injuries he has sustained throughout his career. But it's also a, a testament to him, his upbringing, and his DNA that no matter what he's been confronted with, he keeps going forward, right? He comes back from injury. He's had multiple, you know, issues with his shoulders. Doesn't matter. He keeps coming back, and he does all that while still getting straight A's um, and earning the right to be tapped like he is. So, um, tremendous young man. The, the tight end room is pretty rejuvenated. What have you seen from the competition levels there? Nonstop. Those guys certainly. Um, best part about that room is that they push each other. That's the best part. They know that they have talent. They're not resting on that, and they're not expecting for them to just magically get better. What you see is a group that is being pushed hard. I know Coach Woodle really grinds on them. I spent a little bit of time with them in some of the run game stuff, and they take a lot of pride and detail in technique and fundamentals. And, you know, offensively for a long time here at Miami, we've always been very productive at the tight end position. Last year was the first year in a while we took a step back, right? Well, that's not us, and that's not our offense. Okay, so those guys are excited knowing that uh, their involvement, their roles, uh, their production, and their impact is going to continue to get bigger and bigger. Thank you, Coach.